People who have had a creepy feeling about someone come true. What happened? Back when I was in high school some new kid joined. Only really interacted with him on the football field but he really rubbed me the wrong way. I'm not a small guy. I'm big enough to fend for myself so while he creeped me out, I wasn't really scared of him. I should have been. But ego gets in the way when you're a teenager. All of a sudden. He tries to injure me in discreet ways while playing football, like stamping on my ankle, tripping me up while none of us had the ball nobody was looking etc. After a couple more incidents he stepped it up, a lot. He ended up stabbing me in the face while I was reading a book. We don't know if he meant to murder me, or seriously maim me but he punched me three times with a sharpened key in his fist. Two of the blows got deflected by my glasses, which left a giant mark on the lenses and where my temple was. Sometimes you feel off about someone but they don't look like they can really threaten you too much but in reality they can and will. In college I worked at a bar and they brought in this new bouncer. From the second I met him I immediately felt like there was something seriously wrong with him. His smile and eye contact were too intense. I told a co-worker that the guy gave me the creeps and she told me she thought he was cute and nice and didn't get where I was coming from. A quick google search pulled up his mugshot and articles about how he was watching his college roommate's dog one weekend and horribly attacked and abused it. He burned this poor dog and poured bleach on her. She thankfully survived and he was arrested. The article talked about how he was laughing at the police arresting him saying he knows he won't get in any trouble. He was fired and told to never come back once. Management found out. Not me, but my mom. My sister was going to visit her friend out of state, so her friend's friend offered to drive her there. He drove a few hours to get to our house and was noticeably tired when he arrived, so my sister suggested that he just sleep on our couch and they'll go in the morning. The entire night, my mom's going in and out of our room saying that there's something off about the guy, that she doesn't really like him but can't figure out why. She actually quietly went out the side door and wrote down his license plate at one point. The next morning my sister's in his car for maybe 30 minutes before she feels sick and asks him to just take her home. Which he does, much to my mother's delight. About 6 months later my mom's looking at her newsfeed when she sees a familiar face and calls my sister and I over and yells. I told you something was off about him. Turns out that about a year earlier he murdered his ex-girlfriend and that his friend, who helped him bury her body, finally decided to tell the cops not because he developed a conscience, but because he was mad at him for stealing his toaster. TL. DR. Mum thought house guest was creepy. House guest turns out to be a murderous toaster thief. There was a guy interested in dating my mom years ago. She wasn't interested. Something seemed off. He was also interested in dating two of her other friends. All three had young daughters. Shortly after this we moved away, and he started dating one of the friends. They stayed with us at a weekend music festival, and the girl wanted to stay in the trailer that our family had rented, so we let her. I'll always be grateful we did, because it kept her away from that creep. We found out he was abusing her shortly before we heard that he died in a car accident. Good riddance. Guys like that are the main reason I have no interest in dating right now. My daughter is 11 and I'm okay with being single for a few more years. I prefer that to unknowingly bringing a monster into the house. My mum and I were in a cafe and she had her handbag down by her feet. This couple comes in and sits at the table behind us. And he attracted my attention because he kept poking his GF. Telling her how to sit and stuff and just. The hairs on my neck went up. I hate that controlling bulls. So he's in my periphery and this guy won't sit still when my mum says hey where's my bag? She finds it a second later. Moved and open. She reached in to get her purse and said my card has gone. So the couple behind had stood and were walking a speed towards the door and I didn't even hesitate stop that man because I figured I could apologize later if I was wrong. One of the waitresses was right by the door and she followed him out the door at which point the guy dropped my mum's card mumbled something about having found it and then ran for it. I guess if he hasn't been such an ass to his gf I probably wouldn't have noticed. Always had a creepy feeling about my stepdad growing up, never liked him one bit, turned out he was a pathological liar, lied about having cancer to get my family's sympathy, embezzled money from my mom's business to gamble, real crap bag of a human being, kid sense dirt. 
pay. Don't know if anyone will see this, but around middle school I started getting creeped out by my father. He wouldn't even do anything you could point to and say that right there. That's it. But you just got the feeling he was Link a spider, watching and waiting, something lurking and dangerous. He began running with a group called Scam the Scammers, where they'd make scammers do ridiculous things. It was all in good fun because they deserved it. Humiliating. Sometimes painful things. Teachers wouldn't call home to discuss anything we did, positive or negative. There were notes in my file to only discuss things with my mother, no matter what. He started to become obsessed with conspiracy theories. Obama was a Kenyan Muslim. My mother was cheating on him with a woman and three men. All sorts of things. You got the feeling something was wearing my father as a skin suit. That's the best way I can describe it. Turns out he has an inoperable brain tumor. He's permanently changed. My father is alive. But he's no longer my dad. Ro. Thank you for sharing. I'm sorry about your dad not being himself. Went to school with this guy since about 4th grade. He was a bully and made sure I knew that I wasn't liked as he used an old doll and named it after me and beat it up with his friends. He always had a weird creepy vibe, which got worse in high school. He and his friends were a lot nicer to me in high school but I stayed away as much as I could as he made me uncomfortable. About a year after we graduated he was arrested for following an underage girl and groping her near her school when she was on lunch break. His friends have since cut off contact. Not sure what's happened to him, but he always creeped me out. Naming a doll after you and beating it. That's too creepy and disturbing. When I was trying to get my mental health back on track I went to see this psychiatrist who just gave me a super creepy vibe the minute I saw him but was such a good psychiatrist I decided to ignore it. My gut feeling was correct when about 4-5 months into me seeing him he was arrested for having 10,000 plus unsolicited photos of patients feet them sitting on his couch that I've sat on. It sucks opening up to someone so much and having something like this happen especially in this type of work. I had a doctor do the same. Different speciality. Different fetish pics. I'm currently waiting trial. I know how you feel, it is so much more heinous to use a position of trust to gain access to people just to take advantage of them. Got a bad vibe from the dad across the street when I was a kid. Military guy who always seemed to be on a power trip. His oldest son and I went to the same school, and would occasionally carpool. One day it was his dad's turn to drive us. His son stayed homesick, but he offered to drive me all the same. Thankfully it wasn't a long ride, but the entire time he talked about his beat up Camaro, definitely creeped me out. Fast forward a couple years, his wife threw him out one morning, turns out he had been beating the crap out of her for a while. One morning while hitting her again, he stepped on their one new baby who was crawling on the floor and broke the kid's arm. Never saw him again after that. This comment literally gave my chills. Such a scary thought to think that a person could be that negligent. Glad he disappeared. I worked in a fast food restaurant from 1416. The lovely old couple sold it to a younger couple, and I got the creeps around the husband from day one. Tried to ignore it, just get on with work, but the first time we were working just the two of us. He followed me into the walk-in freezer and groped me. I learned to pay attention to my radar after that. There was this guy that one of my friends at church was dating at the time. I really just felt something dark when I was around him. They eventually married but divorced later on. It turns out that feeling was because this guy is a legit serial killer. Initially, he confessed to I think 3 murders. The police now believe he is responsible for at least 10 within 200 miles of our small town. Guy in high school always gave me the creeps but I could never figure out why. Six months later they find a rifle in his locker at school and that he called in bomb threats. This was before any of the school shootings happened in the US so at the time it didn't really think that much of it. Now it totally freaks me out. I just looked him up and there is an entire reddit thread about him. He's now a neo-nazi and possible murderer. Dude couch surfing at my son's apartment had a very twitchy vibe like an addict hurting for a fix. I asked my son oh no, he hates drugs. He just has like arthritis or something. He borrowed my son's car, got his fix, crashed the car, said he had got carjacked. We reported the car stolen. Two days later he OD'd in my son's apartment. My son found him and the M's guys saved him. 
My son realized he had issues and started looking for Medicaid rehab space. Dude OD'd again on the couch. M saved him again Narcan is magic. We went to the hospital. Told him he could not come back and to text my son where he wanted his crap dropped off. We dropped it off at his grandmother's house. Poor grandma. Our bin man always looked creepy and scary. I always avoided him fast forward 5 years he is found with hordes of child abuse pictures videos on his laptops and 11 years jail time. This happens way too much and I hate it. I'm a graveyard shift cashier and hate it when getting a skeevy feeling from someone for no reason once they walk in because my urge is to sweep away unfounded suspicions. But then that person inevitably runs out the door with merch and makes me regret doubting myself. A neighborhood kid I grew up with liked to play with matches and was fascinated with fires of any kind. It made me nervous because a sort of wild look came over his eyes when he'd stare at the fire he created. I even told my parents, who mentioned it to his parents, who thought it was just a phase he was going through. Then, a few years later, it was reported that he burned his parents garage down and was being charged with arson, as I described in Ask Credit some time ago, and clinically treated for pyromania. When I used to work at a deli, we hired a 20 something kid that looked like the serial killer, Ed Kempis on the mustache. At first, he would amuse us by telling us stories about how he had fought off 8 guys with weapons, or how his girlfriend was a model who traveled all the time, and that is why we never saw her. Then things started getting bad, especially when someone angered him. I would catch him talking to himself, saying things like, if I see that bee again I am going to stick this in both her eyes. Management got wind of this and canned his butt immediately. 10 months later, we find out he actually went to prison for attempting to assault someone with a knife. I used to work with a gentleman a while back who was really nice, but gave off something like a dominant vibe to a certain extent. After he had left for a new job, we never kept contact, but I could see his and his wife's social media. They were the picture perfect family with two daughters with another on the way, always smiling, going on trips and just enjoying life as a unit. One morning I wake up and see that the wife and kids are missing with the husband giving a come back home plea to the news. So at this point it's becoming a big deal. Next morning upon waking up, I see headlines everywhere reading father confesses to murdering wife and daughters. I was so young that I don't remember, but my dad has told me this story. My uncle had a roommate when I was about 3 years old. He was apparently a pretty nice dude on the surface friendly and didn't at all appear creepy to my dad or uncle that he lived with. Once, my dad and uncle expressed wanting to go somewhere that wasn't appropriate for me and the guy offered to babas it. I was a very sweet and quiet kid, but upon my dad saying he'd be back in a little bit and I was going to stay with this man for a few hours I apparently threw an absolute crap fit kicking, screaming, refusing, and even at 3 this was absolutely not normal behavior. My dad was really confused but changed his mind and did not leave me with him. Who only weeks later my uncle discovered he had a history of prison time for child pee possession and attempted kidnapping. There's an older guy who visits my workplace a lot just to chat with our staff. He never buys anything. He just really loves talking to us. The first time I met him, we wound up chatting for a solid 15 minutes. It was almost a pleasant experience I love chatting with friendly customers. But for some reason he put me on edge. He spent the whole 15 minutes telling me about his life's adventures. Starring in a Smashing Pumpkins tribute band, getting detained at the airport for having a gun. He said he was in the military and was flying overseas to do some training exercises in America or something and there was a misunderstanding about some paperwork he had for the gun. I dunno. And he told me about his work as a guidance counselor. He flowed from one story to the next without any discernible link connecting them but he was charismatic enough to keep the conversation flowing smoothly anyway. I felt lost at Seal Mayo. On the surface he seemed like a well-traveled, genuinely friendly guy. But he still set off a bunch of alarm bells in my head. My general rule with chatty people is, friendly is good, unless you are aggressively excited to be talking to me. He definitely fell into the aggressive category. Later I mentioned the guy to a co-worker. He said he thought the guy was creepy too. Apparently during one of this guy's visits he held my co-worker hostage and told him, very cheerily, all about the time he got in a bar fight and he murdered a guy with his three buddies.
My guess is he's a pathological liar more than an actual murderer. My parents tell me that when I was around 4-5 I was the most extroverted kid. I loved going out and about with my parents so I could wave hello to every single person I saw. I never met a stranger. Little old ladies love me. I would let anyone hold me if they wanted. To the point that my parents were alarmed at how I didn't mind people I had never met before holding me and bouncing me on their lap. We had some elderly neighbors who were nice as could be. One day their 30 something son came to live with them. The old couple had told my parents about him moving in and how excited they were. Well they came by our house to introduce him to us since we were in the driveway. Apparently I got really quiet when they were walking towards me and when the guy spoke to me. I screamed and hid behind my dad's legs. My parents thought it was out of character so they actively avoided allowing me to be near him in the weeks that followed. A few months later he was arrested for child trafficking, child molestation, and hundreds of pictures and videos of child P. T. L. D. R. Screamed and ran away from my new neighbor. He was arrested for being a child predator. Thank goodness for your parents having the smarts to keep you away from him instead of chalking it up to kid nerves and making you hang out with him. That is some impressive vibe senses from you. Real thankful you got out of that one. Used to have an older, 40 plus, roommate when I was 19 and living with my mother. He owned the house we stayed in. He tried to convince me at the time that I was not in control of my emotions, and as such he would say that he would help me to balance mind, body, and spirit. He was also profoundly vulgar, non-stop. Fast forward a month later and he'd taken it upon himself to take my belongings from me, that I paid for, because it's his house, his rules. We had multiple altercations where he'd antagonize me, and make me feel powerless. A lot of emotional abuse. I had no cell phone. So a lot of the times when this happened, he would turn off the house phone so that I couldn't call my mom while she was at work. I later found out that he'd planned to put his hands on me when my mom inevitably moved out due to all the crap he'd put her through. How the freaking heck did you get this roommate? When I was in elementary school we often had a colleague of my mom visiting us. Her oldest son was my age so he always came with her to play with me. I could not stand him. He seemed nice and well mannered but something about him just gave me the chills. It was just an overall feeling that even though he was really nice to me and everyone else that it felt like he was just acting everything. I avoided being alone with him and never told anyone how I felt about him. I was really glad when his and my mom argued about some stupid crap. She thought my mom bad mouthed her to other colleagues which my mom denied, and the visit stopped. They never rekindled their friendship and my mom started to work at another company a few months later and that was the end of it. Fast forward 11 years. My mom read in the newspaper about them. The well-mannered and nice son stabbed his mom to death for apparently no reason. My old manager. I always got a sinister vibe from him. And although everyone else seemed to love him and he was a funny guy, I always had this sort of dangerous vibe from him that kept me on edge around him. Uh, three months later, he became my direct manager, and trapped me in a room and groped me on literally the first day. My mother's ex-boyfriend. They met online and only communicated on the phone and through text for a solid year before they actually met in person. First time I met him, I knew something was off about him but my mom was happy so I brushed it off thinking nothing more would come about it because they live so far apart. Six months after they met, she announced she was moving out of state to go live with him. Again, something wasn't right about this having only met in person once but she's an adult and can make her own decisions. I barely spoke to her after she moved. She never returned calls or texts and when she did it was always cut short and no details about how everything was going. About 8 months after she moved I get a call from her while I'm at work. She's in the hospital with a broken arm and claims she fell but I can barely understand what she's saying. Her voice was faint and crackly. She tells me she's coming to visit and asks if she can stay with me for a few weeks. I knew something was terribly wrong. She shows up at my door days later and is black and blue from head to toe. Her voice was faint because this butthole had choked her and his hand prints were still visible around her throat. And yes, he was the one that broke her arm. Turns out, this guy was still married. Not only that but he had embezzled a bunch of money from the insurance agency he worked at and hasn't filed taxes in years. 
My mom found out all of this after she got home from work one day and found his wife waiting for him on their doorstep. Guy comes home. My mom confronts him. He beats the crap out of her. Fast forward to a month later when my mom finally returns to their house to get her stuff and move. He's nowhere to be found. A few suits and essentials are missing but basically everything else is still there and his phone is disconnected. My mom calls his brother to ask what she should do with all of his belongings and his brother tells her that he has upped and moved to another state with another woman he has been seeing for nearly a year and to just get out of there and not worry about him or his things. The woman he moved in with did some digging and found his wife's number who proceeded to tell her everything. She also called my mother to apologize and called the authorities. He somehow catches wind of this and never returns back home. No idea where he's at now but we google his name and info every so often to see if he's been found yet. When I was 6 or so, my older brother, 11 or 12 at the time, was involved in this community kids club thing for tween boys. They met in our basement. The group leader was this guy, maybe 30, who was some kind of generic cub scout leader, without really being a scout. They would play games and talk about their lives and hobbies, etc. I was much younger and a girl, but I wanted to play too. He was always really serious and stern with me, and told me I couldn't be there in my own basement. He would literally stop the meeting and politely but firmly ask me to leave. Even as a little kid I got a weird vibe about that. We found out years later that the dude was a PRphile particularly attracted to teen boys. He was arrested for having a bunch of pornography and assaulting a boy. My brother said nothing ever happened in the basement, but a lot of shoulder touches and such. Still creeps me out. Roommate to overly trust strangers BC everyone has a story while I agree. It doesn't mean you let in obvious hard drug users who claims to have killed people. Long story short the guy ended up killing his 65 yo girlfriend. Not my roommate's girl just to be clear. Comma long story short the guy ended up killing his girlfriend. That must have been one heck of a wake up call. Another thing was my local town bridge and a guy who had made some money came back and wanted to give something to the town. Not sure who or why but must have been music related because he put on a show and booked Fallout Boy to play our town hall. I'm sure people will laugh at that but it was a big deal for a lot of kids and was big for the community. At that show Ian Watkins was there walking around the back of the hall trying not to be noticed. We all noticed him and he was just putting his hands around girls when they asked for a photo like hands over the shoulder across their tee. We just thought he was creepy with girls but when the kids stuff came out it was shocking but not shocking. If any girl had any experience like this I'd like to hear it firsthand. I definitely saw him doing it and felt a really odd vibe. As soon as Bridge End was mentioned I knew where this was going. I had an engineering teacher who acted quite weird around girls and was always organizing girl only trips because more girls needed to be in engineering we all thought it was weird call him the nonce of the school. Come back after summer to find out he was arrested for having indecent images of girls and children on his laptop and blamed it on the school kids. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.